Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? If the answer is yes, then and we're ready, ready to, to believe, believe you. you. Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean from Tested. And I'm super excited, super thrilled for Sean to introduce to you the Ghost Trap. This is a project that Sean, you've been working on for several months now. Yes. Uh, we're given the opportunity to do it by Dremel with their 3D printer. Mm -hmm. And so this is actually a Ghost Trap that is almost entirely 3D printed. Yes, as much as possible, every single piece on this was designed in 3D and 3D printed when possible, yeah. So how many total components here? Uh, it's over 50 parts and over 70 screws and over 40 hours of print time for everything. Wow. Yeah. Now, when we say you printed this out and assembled it, you didn't just find a file online and download it and print it out. You actually right. modeled and designed this and created this design based on a bunch of references. I know people out there who are fans of Ghostbusters are gonna, the first question they're gonna ask is, which ghost trap is it? Right, and that that ended up being a very complicated question. It, it, I will be upfront, it is a hybrid trap between G Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2. The 2 trap tends to be a little bit smaller uh, because the actors are complaining about how big and heavy the props were, so they made the number 2 a little smaller. And I like that just as far as the, it just felt like a good size, and fitting, we want everything to fit on the print bed, so uh, I, I went that way for that reason. Um, but there are th features of the one trap that I really liked and that I've replicated. So this is a perfect hybrid between the two. So overall size is Ghostbusters 2, but there are some things from Ghostbusters 1, such as the, uh, the cartridge, which you know would remove and go into the mm -hmm. containment unit. Uh, on the twos, they tended to be flush with the front, and I have it sticking out a little bit like on the one because I like that aesthetically. Uh, there, I did the red side rails, which are silver in one, because I just, I really, or they they're silver out. in two. I really like the red ones on one, so I did that as well. So, but the knobs in the overall size and the, and the types of screws used in most places are based on two. And the plans that I was able to get uh, were also Ghostbuster 2 plans. So there's, I couldn't have done this without a, a ton of different sources and help. Uh, Mark Dubo from Tippett Studios uh, kind of pointed me in the right direction to find some stuff. Uh, I use plans from gbfans.com, from uh, Sean Bishop and uh, mm. Stefan Otto, uh, which were great, really detailed stuff. I started with those as base, and then I kind of started veering off onto my own to kind of for modifications that I needed to do or to make things work for the 3D printing. Because you approach this as designing a model kit. It's yes. not just one finished piece, it's gonna be a kit for people to assemble and also has functionality, and also just sourcing the original components. A lot of the hardware here is just stuff that was built in the 80s. Yes, and that's, and that's a really good, there, there are other 3D printed traps that are available out there, but what they would do, and this is stuff we've talked about before, is so the whole side panel would just be one big piece with everything molded on it and it'd print out like this, which the, you know, everything's not placed for optimal printing quality and uh, it makes it hard if you want to paint it. So I broke everything out into its actual pieces so that you could, uh, you could just print them in silver or black or red or whatever and put it together without any paint or anything and it would look pretty good. In, in retracing what the original prop masters and the prop builders did for the movie, uh, you found some of the original source components, at least found what they were called and what they were named. Yes. So can we call it some of those right now? Yeah, uh, so GB Fans was great for this. It's a site dedicated to nothing but Ghostbusters stuff. Uh, and they've identified a lot of pieces. So like say these foster connectors, which are really hard to find, mini pneumatic air connectors for the hose assembly. The relay, a rare Italian electronic relay, which you cannot find anywhere. So I have a very close replica of that. That It's not even a replica, it's a different relay that I use to stand in for that. Uh, some of the knobs, the resistor, which is very hard to find. This stuff called vector plate, which is a, a, a constructural component for computer stuff. Uh, this particular one, this skirted knob is impossible to find. You can find the top portion, but none with a skirt. So this is completely 3D printed in this mm. case. 
so there, yeah, there's the, the lens shades, the toggle switches. There are so many parts. I think I spent a week alone just finding parts. Even with all the information at Ghostbuster, uh, gbfans.com, uh, and they even have a really nice shop where you can buy some of the parts, uh, the original stuff or replicas. Uh, but I wanted to get a hold of some of the uh, as much of the physical original stuff as possible to replicate from. Right, you have the original parts that you down, you source, you then modeled, you print it out, put together, and then there's also functionality. So yes. let's show people how it actually works. Yeah, so I I hate it when you get a really cool looking prop replica and you go to take like, you, you wanna take the ammo cartridge out or pull the trigger or something, you're like, oh, it doesn't actually work. It's kind of, it's just like a little like meh. And so I try to replicate these things doing everything that I really want it to. So I knew that I wanted this to work. Um, so lights and sound were a must. The doors- uh, Had to open. The doors had to open, which turned out to be the biggest problem to solve because you know, in the movies, there's the trap that only smokes and the trap that only rolls and the trap that only makes light. And so this has to be all combined into one unit. And I didn't want little rods sticking out the top to open and close the doors. So I had to figure out a way to make the doors open and close without seeing the mechanism. So there's a whole chain drive system, which we'll go over later in depth, yep. that is hidden in the front unit here that opens and closes the door. Wow, motors activated <laughs> by the pedal, yes. chain drive actually then flips open the doors. Mm -hmm. And then as you saw, you have lights yes. and some smoke. Yes, uh, originally I was going to use uh, uh, smoking units from model trains. Uh, that ended up, they're kind of large and a lot of them use liquid, you can't tip them over and they're expensive and I just didn't think it was going to work really well. Uh, in the movie they used uh, dry ice or, or liquid smoke effects uh, and I wanted something that you could self-contain, be repeatable and easy to use. So I started thinking about e-cigarettes. Um, and I went down a rabbit hole of vaping, uh, <laughs> which, which I, I've had plenty of that. Uh, but the technology in these things is actually really cool. Uh, and I found that there are other people who have used, done it before. I could not find a lot of like exactly how they did it. So I, I was buying like magic DVDs, like for magic tricks that, you know, and, and it turns out it was e-cigarettes. So yeah. I was on the right path. Um, so I did a lot of research in the e-cigarettes and there are two e-cigarettes that are mounted in here with an air pump that pumps uh, the smoke into a 3D printed rail that goes around the, uh, the, the entryway here and then puts it out outlets. And then also lights, you have sounds in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's some uh, light programming. Yeah, originally, so that's a problem. I wanted to use the actual real hose connectors which are, are meant as air connectors. So there's no real way to run wires through this and still be able to disconnect them, which I really wanted that functionality so you could you know, display them separately if you wanted to. But that caused a problem. How do you trigger it from the pedal? So uh, Jeremy Williams uh, helped me out on all the electronics and programming. I could not have done this without him. Um, and we talked about doing wireless. So I have a wireless transmitter in the pedal that would have a receiver in the trap. So we messed around with that and we had a lot of flaky components, a lot of failing components, and even when it worked, it did not work reliably. So Jeremy is like, I don't think that we can do this. And I was like, I don't know what we're gonna do. So I went back to the drawing board and I figured out a somewhat complex way to actually put wire in the hose and uh, make these into connectors. So there is a 3D printed insert inside this hollow foster connector that then has a brass uh, rod in the middle to make this a two connection uh, setup. And then the wires in this complete the connection and it is actually hardwired now. Has a micro switch in the hose here to trigger it. Sean, that is incredible and you got a ghost trapped in there. Now yes. you're calling this the deluxe version. The deluxe. Even though you source components, you model the components for 3D printing, you were actually able to find a bunch of the original Greeblies and parts mm -hmm. that actually let you assemble a close to original plus. Yes, yes. Now for people out there, for some of those components that are very expensive or very difficult to find, you're actually releasing the files so someone can 3D print almost the entire trap on their own. Yes, so here we have the completely 3D printed trap, uh, other than a few key things which are just impossible to you know, accurately 3D print, such as the, the, uh, 
the relay. Mm -hmm. um, but the you know the pedal, the vector plate is 3D printed. Uh, the handle is 3D printed. The sides are 3D printed. The foster connectors. So as much as possible. Now it is put together with real uh, nuts and bolts still for aesthetic reasons because they it's really hard to print little tiny uh, screw heads and everything and look make it look really really good. And it also allows it to be accessible for modding. Yes. So, uh, but everything on this, uh, the, the aluminum plates, everything is 3D printed. Awesome. And both from afar and up close, these models are almost indistinguishable. They can have the same functionality if you want to mm -hmm. put the same electronics in. Yes. This has been a truly amazing project. I, we want to go in depth and explain to everyone how you designed it, how you and Jeremy worked on the electronics. And we'll have that in a future video. So stay tuned for an in-depth look at the ghost trap design from Sean. Yes. But please enjoy the ghost trap. Enjoy. Looks good. Three, two. Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? If the answer is yes, we're ready. Oh, I think yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'll, I will say that. Okay. If the answer is then, yes, then we're, we're ready, ready to, to believe you. Should we look at each other? Yeah. If, yeah. if the answer is yes, then we're, we're ready, ready to, to believe, believe you. you. Uh, this is gonna that, be that, that's that's oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement? Ah. Do you feel? <laughs> Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? If the answer is yes, then, then we're, we're ready, ready to, to believe, believe you. you.